Sitting right beside me is the new Tissot Sea Star. I picked up my pug mug instead of the Tissot Sea Star. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always. And today we're talking the Tissot Sea Star. The Powermatic 80 movement is in this bad boy. It is an incredible watch, but there's just a couple of things that I'm not sure about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the specs of this model and we're gonna talk about everything there is to talk about, what this watch can do. And then we'll talk about what I'm not as sure about. But there's a lot of things that I am sure about. I mean, it's a good looking watch, but. I'm rambling. Let's begin with the case diameter. The case diameter comes in at 43 millimeters. For those of you that know me and watch the channel, you'll know that this is just on the cusp of being that little bit too big for me. My Amiga comes in at 42 millimeters just to compare the two. And also, if you think about the Big Pilot 43 millimeters, because it doesn't have a bezel, it sits and wears a little bit bigger. Because this does have a bezel, it kind of shrinks down the face size that little bit more. So it is more suitable for smaller wrists, but personal preference, it's just that little bit too big for me. Now it gets to the point in the video where I get my digital calipers out and measure the case thickness and the lug to lug. So starting with the case thickness, it comes in at 13.7 millimeters, according to these digital calipers. With that said, the Tissot website says that this comes in at 12.7 millimeters in thickness. So that is a millimeter difference between what I'm getting and what they're getting. So let's just settle somewhere in between. We are pausing this episode of Time in the Wrist because we have a very exciting giveaway. We are giving away five Breggy hats. All you need to do to be in the chance of winning one of these bad boys is subscribe to the channel and comment with your favorite Breggy model. Let's get on to the lug to lug. Now, I do have to say, this watch has quite elongated lugs. For how kind of compact it is, it kind of has really elongated lugs, more so than my Amiga Seamaster, I would say. So it's quite interesting. The lug to lug comes in at 49.2 millimeters, maybe just under, according to my calipers. The bracelet and the case have a combination of brushed and polished steel. Now this plays wonderfully with the light and I'm quite used to that coming from my Amiga Seamaster which kind of has the same um, brushed and polished feel. But what I'm not used to and what's quite unique about this watch is the case. Now I love watches that do something unique and do something different to the grain and I've never seen this before. And I think that that's partly why we get into the watch industry in the first place is because every watch in itself has unique details that we fall in love with and that we nerd out over. We just love little details in the watch industry. This, however, just isn't for me. And the reason that it's not for me is because I'd be too nervous that I'd scratch it. It's a really nice design feature, but just in my lifestyle, as a photographer, videographer, you might have seen the watch vlog, plug it up here if you haven't seen it, I'd just be nervous to scratch it. Now we get to the clasp, but before we talk about the clasp, let's talk a little bit about that bracelet. For your money, for the money you're spending on this watch, and I'll get to that a little bit later, you're getting a lot for your money. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak. This is a really high quality bracelet, and hats off to Tissot. I like the fact that it doesn't taper in. I am kind of more of a NATO man or a rubber strap man myself, but I can appreciate a good bracelet. The clasp at the bottom of the bracelet has a little safety latch here, and then it's a deployment clasp that goes just like that. It also is in a brushed metal or a matte kind of metal instead of a polished. Now, this is a good, good detail. And let me explain why it's a good detail. I myself am a little bit of a desk diver. That's what I would consider myself as. I get diving watches. Do I ever go diving? No, I'm a little bit of a desk diver. Not a bad thing, lots of us are. And when I had my desk diving watch with a bracelet, I tended to scratch the clasp just because I was editing. So I was sort of wiping my wrist across the table back and forth and that would scratch it. But when it's in matte or when it's in brushed, it doesn't show, show scratches as much as it would if it was in polished. So it's a good detail and they've really thought about the design here. Let's move on to the face of this watch. But before we move on to the face, let's do the tradition at Chisholm Hunter. Let's do the wrist check. What is on your wrist today? Let me know in the comments. Let me know the background story. I'd love to have that conversation with you. At the moment, I'm wearing the Amiga Seamaster 300 meters, the king of all watches, in my opinion. It is, it's just a king, in fact. Let's begin with the bezel on this piece. So the bezel comes in a beautiful blue color. It comes in the same color as that dial. It has white numerals that stand out wonderfully against that blue. And it's actually considerably thinner than my Amiga that I have on at the moment. 
And I have to say something here. It's actually a lot easier to turn than my Amiga. The teeth are a lot more prominent. They're not too prominent, they're not too sharp. They don't dig into your fingers, but they're a lot easier to turn. And I suppose that comes back to the functionality aspect of this watch. It is a diver. And when divers go diving, they have big thick wetsuits on, so they need to have that grip. But enough of talking about that bezel. I know the real reason that you guys come to this channel. That's the reason right there. That is subtle. You know, there's nothing worse to me when I get a bezel and it's too smooth. It's almost like there's not a prominent click so that you don't know you've actually clicked the bezel, if that makes any sense. It's a little detail, but that's what makes luxury luxury. The dial is in a kind of dark navy blue color with a sunray pattern running through it. It looks beautiful in the light. And just from a personal standpoint, I do prefer darker blues than lighter blues. I just feel that they suit more attires. They, they suit suits, they suit casual clothes. They just suit more to me. Then we get to the hands and the indices and they're both highly polished, which makes them stand out even more against that dial and also gives it that bit of depth. Let's, however, take a look at the loop. Okay, so we have my flashlight. We're gonna turn it on and recharge or charge up this loop. But while we are charging it up, it's important to say that Chisholm Hunter are authorized retailers for Tissot watches. So if you wanna view any Tissot watches in particular, head to chismhunter.co.uk. And that's pretty much the plug done. So let's look at the loom. So at the moment you can see the loom just on the hands and the indices here. It's also a fully functional diver. So it has a dot of loom just here. It's kind of more of a blue loom than a green loom. And I quite like it. This model also has a date window at six o'clock, which is a breath of fresh air to me. You guys know that I love six o'clock date windows. I just think it adds that little bit more symmetry, but, but. What I'm not too sure on is the fact that the date window is actually circular. I'm used to rectangular or square date windows. So this is just a little bit different. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong, but it is very different. Again, I like the direction that Tissot are going in, making something new, making waves in the industry. But on a personal level, I would just rather the square or the rectangle date window. This model has a screw down crown, which allows a water resistance of 300 meters. It also has sapphire crystal glass. And to add to that, it has glass on the underbelly, revealing the Powermatic 80 movement. Before I got onto the movement, I have to say, Tissot produced some of the best watches you can buy for your money. The Powermatic 80 movement is absolutely phenomenal. The designs of watches, you know, it's kind of like Marmite to a lot of people. Some people love things, some people hate them. People like different stuff but a movement is liked by everybody by being high quality. And this movement's amazing. Listen, it's as simple as this. The Powermatic 80 movement is possibly one of the best movements you can buy for 645 pounds. That is the cost of this watch. And I would go as far to say, in my opinion, that it's one of the best divers you can buy below 1,000 pounds. But enough of that, let's get into the specs of this movement and really see what is in the beating heart of this Tissot watch. The movement in this model is the Powermatic 80.111. It's a fully automatic movement with 23 joules. It comes in at 25.6 millimeters in diameter and has up to 80 hours of power. Okay, so we've covered the dial, we've covered the movement, we've covered the specs, the bracelet, we've covered everything that there is that you need to know about this watch. What we haven't covered, however, is how I feel about this model personally. And why was this video titled that I'm not sure about it? You know, it's funny, design is a very subjective thing. I have a grey car, you might have a black car, Drew might have a blue car, he might have a red car. Everyone likes different things, they like different colourways, and watches by their nature will never be perfect because we'll always want to change something. Even the king of watches itself that's on my wrist at the moment, there's little details that I would change if I could. And that's part of the fun of watch being in the watch industry is you always want the next thing, you always want the chase. And lots of watch people in the watch industry talk about the chase a lot. But the thing I wouldn't change is the movement. And the movement in the Tissot is absolutely brilliant. It is a powerhouse. The design is great, but it's not the thing that powers and runs the watch. And after all, you want to keep your watch for as long as possible. You wanna hand it down the generations. It can be a very sentimental thing. And for this reason, I'm extremely conflicted. 
I honestly don't know what to feel about this watch. What do you feel about it? Do you think it's for you? Let me know in the comments. By the way, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for all your requests that you've sent to the Chisholm Hunter Watches Instagram page, which is our new Instagram page. We have been overloaded with suggestions and reviews and what you guys want to see. We will get around to them as soon as possible, I promise you guys. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.